From emergency food aid to finding shelter and warmth, victims of a natural disaster depend on a rapid response from the international community to rebuild their lives. But they also need creative solutions for dealing with the pain and loss of starting over. After the devastating 2005 earthquake in Rawalpindi, Pakistan, artist and architect Nadia Janjua helped teach locals how to build earthquake-resistant huts. The community emerged from that tragedy stronger than ever. But that experience also changed Nadia forever. And what she learned in those huts continues to inspire her style of art. My mom's family is Kashmiri originally, but they grew up in Pakistan, um, and my father is Pakistani. So my love for making art with my hands and making art of what I call the everyday, you know, the everyday object goes back to what I saw in Pakistan, where, you know, you have a bowl that you're eating out of that may say um, something in calligraphy, or you have a mug that says a word of remembrance. I grew up with the thought that everything can be art. My sister is only a year and a half older than me, and I, I must have been either three or four. And she's, you know, she's five years old, and she's doing math equations because she was the genius that she is. She's doing math equations at five, and then I'm kind of just sitting there coloring. And my father asks us, you know, what are you doing? And she describes this elaborate equation, and I'm just like, red, yellow, blue. Like, I just say these three colors. I think it's, you know, my, my kind of, my love for color started, started then, but ultimately I, I started painting when I was 16 when I came across um, the Bob Ross show, you know, on, on the public television channel. Okay. Now then we can go up in here, and just using that little corner, you can begin putting in all kinds of little shapes. The first thing that I did was I would follow all of the instructions, go and buy materials from the art store, and late at night when you know everyone was sleeping in the house, I would uh, I, I would have recorded his shows and I would just play back um, a show and just follow along step by step everything that he was doing. I think part of being an architect is that you appreciate and love materials and so even when I'm painting, even though the main medium is paint, you know, I'm using, um, I'm using wood, I'm using burlap, I'm using plaster, just all kinds of things that, that are, um, you know, that you would see on a construction site. In the past two or three years, I've also moved into making a lot of handmade products. Um, for example, like, you know, jewelry, um, I make keychains, kind of a lot of everyday objects that we use around the house or in our cars or, you know, in, in our homes, in the kitchen, etc. The way that I try to be conscious, you know, environmentally conscious um, when I work on my art is, it's not so direct. I think it's more in subtle ways. Like I. I'd like to use recycled materials. I'd like to use materials that I find around my studio. I love when objects have sentimental value and you know, they only have sentimental value if you give it to them. And I think, for example, one of the signature things that I do in my paintings is that I will scrape the dried paint off my palettes and I'll glue them into my paintings. And I think something that's so beautiful to me about that is that, that you know, those layers of paint hold a lot of memory. They hold the, my confusion, um, my decisions about what color I want to use, my kind of the exploration that I incorporate into the process of making the paintings. When I was in architecture school, I knew very early on that I was interested in doing humanitarian work. I literally had graduated 
and I was traveling around Spain and while I was in Spain this uh, an earthquake happened in Pakistan and it was one of the most devastating earthquakes that had happened and you know Nader who was one of my mentors reached out to me and he asked me would you would you be willing to travel out there and train you know civilians train um, individuals from the army to help teach them this alternate building method That experience broke me in so many ways and I was 25 at the time and so naive and so idealistic um, but it was when I think about where I am today and my view on humanity and even connections and relationships that I have with people, it goes back to this experience. Once there was a woman that came to her site and she had traveled from Kashmir she had lost her students in this earthquake and she would write messages to these children and she would embed them in between the layers of this home that we were building. And you know, that just blew my mind. And I think when I think about how I incorporate paint from my palette or I incorporate objects that I find in my studio, it's the same idea of you can put your love and you know, sentiment into an object and no one has to notice it, but there is just something spiritually that becomes embedded in this work of art or in this home that you're living in, whatever it may be, and people will notice it. When people come in, I want them to see the most powerful piece. That's you and the medium ones on the sides. Yep, that's perfect. So the whole series is about how we hold so much of the material world in our hearts and how it's only when we empty our vessels and empty ourselves that we make space for God. And so what's they do cool, kind of... Yeah, I mean, every single painting is about that, but shows it in a different way. Like some paintings, you see a lot of motion and a lot of gestures, and it's, there's like this tension, kind of like, you know, you're trying to like come out of this uh, chaos. And I feel like you, it changes you. Like it completely changes you. You can't make art without it completely changing you. One thing that I do at my events is I always try to keep a journal out where people can leave comments and from time to time I'll go back and read some of these comments but I think if you know how to communicate with yourself even if that brings about pain um, you will be able to turn it into something positive. I do tackle some heavy themes in my work but somehow Surprisingly to myself even, I'm able to turn it into something positive and I think that's the beauty of the creative process that once you've acknowledged what you're feeling, you've now given yourself an opportunity to turn it into something that can be positive and constructive. That's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on social media. We are CCTV America on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. All of tonight's interviews can be found online at cctv-america.com. And let us know what you'd like us to take full frame next. Email us at fullframe at cctv-america.com. Until then, I'm Mike Walter in Los Angeles. We'll see you next time.